the last of the labs for the comparison instructions, really there was one instruction left, and that's the limit instruction, but we also included in there compound comparisons, meaning that we put more than one comparison instruction, either in series or parallel, within one rung. Okay, we have a timer that we enable with input zero, one second time base, which gives us time to watch an increment. Now again, you could change that TON to an RTO, turn on input zero and wait for it to increment one and turn it back off so it'll hold and you can compare more easily if you like. But this is simple enough, I think, that with one second increments between your glances that you'll get it figured out. So we have a greater than or equal to, and we're comparing the accumulate register of T40 to N70, which has a value of 2. And then we're comparing the accumulate again to N71, which has a value of 5. So for this rung to be true, both these instructions have to be true. In other words, the accumulate has to be greater than or equal to 2 and less than 5 or equal to 5. So uh, if the accumulate's equal to 0, the output's going to be off because 0 is less than 5, but it's not greater than or equal to 2. If the accumulate is 1, the output is still off because we are still not greater than 2 or equal to. However, when we hit 2, the first instruction is true because 2 is greater than or equal to 2, and it's also less than 5. For 3, 3 is greater than or equal to 2, less than or equal to 5. 4, again, is on because 4 is greater than 2, and it's less than 5. The or equal doesn't even come into it. With 5, though, it's greater than 2, it's not less than 5, but it's equal to 5. So the less than or equal to makes the second instruction true. The other one's true because uh, 5 is greater than 2. 6, however, is greater than 2, but it's not less than or equal to 5. As well, 7 is not less than 5, much less equal to. If we throw the results into the number line, then the output is going to be on at 2, inclusive of 2, and on continually, including 5, and then off. To further emphasize the difference between a comparison instruction with an or equal to involved in it, we are now back to um, a few more rungs of logic. We went from a timer to a counter. This gives us a little bit more control because with a counter we can increment to one and then stop until we toggle input zero again. So a timer continues to accumulate as long as the rung is true. A counter data type being instructed by a count up instruction is going to increment by one on each false to true transition of the rung. And then, of course, switch one, input one, allows us to reset it back to zero. So we can go a little bit slower doing our comparison. Rung two is the greater than or equal to and less than or equal to. Rung three is greater than and less than. So whatever the value is, for rung three to be true, it has to be greater than two and less than five, where rung two the value has to be greater than or equal to 2 and less than or equal to 5. So let's uh, toggle through our accumulate value. When the accumulate value is equal to 0, both rungs are false. When the accumulate value is equal to 1, both rungs are false. When the accumulate value is equal to 2, now rung 2 is true because 2 is greater than, but then it's actually equal to 2. So you could say that in rung 2, the first instruction is true because 2 is equal to 2. In the second instruction, the less than or equal to is true because 2 is less than 5. 
when it accumulates to 3, we now have both rungs true. Because in rung 3, 3 is greater than 2 and it's also less than 5. When we increment to 4, same condition, both rungs are true. When we increment to 5, however, the um, accumulate value is 5. 5 is greater than 2 and it's less than or equal to 5 which makes that rung true and output 0 is on. However, in rung 3, 5 is greater than 2 but it's not less than 5. When we go to 6 for the accumulate value, both rungs are false, 7 both rungs are false. So then we add the results to the following number lines. And here you get a really good comparison between the two types of instructions. Greater than, greater than or equal to, less than, less than or equal to. You could say that adding the equal includes the limits of the set, if you wanted to say it that way. But I'm sure you understand by adding the equal that you're expanding the range that the rung is going to be true. A further emphasis of the previous logic is what we've done here. We've basically taken, taken source B, N70 and N71, and made them equal. They're both 3. So the first rung is going to be true if the counter accumulate is greater than or equal to 3 and less than or equal to 3. And in the second rung, this rung will be true if the counter accumulate is greater than 3 and less than 3 together, logically and it together, which I think right away you know the answer to that. So, when the accumulate was equal to 0, both outputs were off because uh, 0 isn't greater than 3. When we increment to 1, an accumulate of 1 is not greater than 3. An accumulate of 2 is not greater than 3. However, when we get to an accumulate of 3, 3 is greater than or equal to 3 and it's less than or equal to 3, but 3 is not greater than 3 and it's not less than 3 at the same time. If we increment or increment the count to 4, 4 is not less than 3, 5 is not less than 3, 6 is not less than 3, and 7 is not less than 3. So the second rung, when you make the source B equal to each other, that rung's never going to be true. In the first rung, the greater than or equal to 3, less than or equal to 3, could be replaced with an equal instruction because the only time this rung's going to be true is with when C50 accumulate is equal to 3. If we finish our number line, output 0 is going to be on when the accumulate is 3 and not for any other value and output 1 will never be on. Okay, comparing the number lines between the last two instances of logic, how does the OR equal affect the output sequence? Adding the OR equal includes source B and of course rung 3 will never be true. In this lab we introduce the limit instruction. In the old days, before the limit instruction, you had to use two instructions to accomplish the same thing. Greater than or equal to ended with less than or equal to. So on rung two, those two instructions together produce the same results as a single instruction in rung three. So when we execute this logic by toggling the switch wired up or connected to the terminals that the state of is recorded in memory location I colon 0, .0, 0 slash 0 is we toggle that and initiate the count up instruction to increment counter data type C50 
we have a continually increasing value that we can use to watch the behavior of rungs two and three to see how they behave. So when the accumulate value for C50 is equal to zero, both, both rungs are false, so both outputs are off. When we increment to one, that was the accumulate value is equal to one, both rungs are still false because a value of one is not greater than or equal to two, even though it is less than or equal to four. But both of these instructions have to be true in order for the rung to be true because they are anded together. Now, when we increment to a value of two for C50 accumulate register, two is equal to two for the first instruction, greater than or equal to two, and it is less than or equal to four. When we increment to three, it is greater than two, and it's less than four. When we increment to four, it is still greater than or equal to two, and it is equal to four. However, when we increment one more position, one more value, when C50 cumulative is equal to five, five is greater than or equal to two, but it is not less than or equal to four. Six, same thing, seven as well. Now, when you added the results in the number lines, so you could compare the two instructions, you see that they both behave 100% identical. Would you say that the limit instruction is true inclusive or exclusive of the low limit and the high limit? Are they included in the range or excluded in the range of true values? In other words, is the limit instruction true when it's equal to the low limit and equal to the high limit in addition to being true when the value, the test value is in between the high and the low limit? The low and high limits are included in the true range, so they are inclusive. So the limit instruction is true if the test value is equal to the low limit or greater and or equal to the high limit or less. Continuing on with the limit instruction. In this lab, we have two limit instructions. However, take a real close look at the high and the low limits. For rung two, the low limit is N70. In rung three, the low limit is N71. Basically, what we've done is in rung two, the low limit has a value of two, the high limit a value of four. So the low limit is actually a lower value than the high limit. And that's the way you would normally expect to use this instruction. In rung three, we've swapped them. So the low limit is a higher value than the high limit. Now, you can do that, but watch what happens when you do that. When C50 accumulate is equal to zero, then rung two is false and rung three is true. In other words, the first limit instruction is false because zero is not between two and four. Rung three, though, is true because zero is outside of two and four. You'll see where we're going here in a minute with this. So you can say the first one is inclusive, the second one is exclusive. So if you want a to look at a limit, but you want the rung to be true, the instruction to be true, if the value is not in between the high and the low limit, then you want to use a higher value for the low limit than the high limit. I know it sounds like a tongue twister, but if you watch here, you'll see how this works. So we, we increment to one, and nothing has changed. We increment to two. Now, both rungs are true because the accumulate is equal to two. So if we look at the two instructions, in one case, the low limit is two. In the other case, the high limit is two. So both of them are true. Now, when we go to three, the first limit instruction, three is in between two and four. But remember that when you have a higher 
integer value for the low limit than the high limit, it becomes exclusive, meaning it's going to be true outside of 2 to 4. Increment to 4, they're both on. Increment to 5. When we get to 5, the limit in rung 2 is false because it's not between or equal to 2 and 4. However, 5 is outside of 2 and 4. So I see the pattern the rest of the way through. So if you want an exclusive limit, meaning you want the rung to be or the instruction to be true when the values are outside the range, not inside the range, then you simply reverse the, lo the low and the high limit. So the low limit is the highest value and the high limit is the lowest value. You play with this a bit and it'll be clear. If we put these in the number lines, you can see the difference between the two. In rung number three, would you say that the limit instruction is true, inclusive, or exclusive of the low limit and the high limit? Are they included in the range or excluded? We've already covered that. Exclusive of the values between the low and the high limits. True outside the range. 